Here's a little Calvin and Hobbes cartoon for you. And um, we're going to take notes on 6.3. Prove triangle similar by angle, angle. And if you need to speed me up, you can. If you need to pause the video so you can write things down, know that you can do that. So I'd like for you to try to remember when we did triangle congruence in chapter 4. In order to prove that these two triangles were congruent, we learned we didn't have to prove that all three angles were congruent to each other and all three sides were congruent to each other. I didn't have to prove that all these... Um, Whoopsie, whoopsie, getting ahead of myself. I didn't have to prove that all six parts and pieces were congruent. I could use shortcuts. And I had the side, side, side shortcut, the side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. And they, and rather than having to have all six pieces equal to both triangles, we could just have three. Well, we have shortcuts with similarity. I don't have to make sure all the corresponding angles are equal and all the sides are proportional. It's enough if we just have two angles congruent. So that's what angle-angle similarity says. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. So angle, angle, similarity. Um, if we draw some triangles here, J, K, L, and I'm trying to make them look the same shape, just one smaller than the other, X, Y, Z. If you know J, and X are congruent, and you know K and Y are congruent, that's enough to prove that triangle JKL, remember this is my triangle similarity statement, is similar to triangle, remember this first one you can write any way you want to, and this one you have to make sure it matches. J and X match, K and Y, and L and Z match. These two are similar by angle-angle similarity. Let's see how to use it. Okay, for our first example, we're going to show that these two triangles are similar. So for example A, do you see the two triangles? Do you see a, E, B, or Abe, let's say it's for Abe. A, B, E, this one up here. And then do you see A, C, D, this large one? So we have two triangles. They definitely both have 52. Sometimes it helps if you um, redraw them down here. So I've redrawn them, and I marked the 52 at B and the 52 at C. Maybe that's easier to see that way. I'm going to tell you that they are similar, and let's see if we can figure out how. And feel free to shout it out. <laughs> be just as loud as you want to be there at your house. And say any type of random thing you'd like to say. All right, I'm just being silly. So we have one set of angles that are equal. We have some 52 degree angles, but no other measures are given to us. So do you see the other angle that's equal in both of them? Pause it if you don't see it yet. So I'm assuming you paused it and you either noticed that they both have angle A or over here you noticed that they overlapped at A. So A is the same in both of them. So we have two angles congruent in both, so these are similar. Yes, by angle, angle. Similar. All right, this other one, we see this triangle S, V, R, and T, V, U. And there are absolutely no numbers given on this. 
So go ahead and pause it and think about how we might find two angles that are equal in both of these. Whether you pause it or not, um, I'm going to remind you of what we always know with bow tie problems. Because this is a little bit of a crooked bow tie, but it's a bow tie. So we still have vertical angles that are equal. So those angles at V are equal. And I notice I have parallel line symbols. So maybe you remember from chapter four how we would trace along the parallel line, go through the transversal, and then finish up through the other parallel line. And the angles that are in the corner of the Z's, those are my alternate interiors that are equal. Remember, it's like alternate interior. And I chose to use SU as the transversal to get those two angles congruent. So now it is angle angle. But you could have used, you could have started on this parallel line, used RT as your transversal, finished on that one, then the corners of your Z would have given you R and T equal. Either way you go about it, you've got the two triangles congruent by angle angle. Okay, here's our last example of these. We want to tell if these two triangles are congruent, similar. I actually see three triangles. Um, the large one, CDE, and then that large one is split up into the two smaller triangles. So any two of the three could be similar. Um, let's see. Pause the video if you want to go ahead and think through this on your own. And again, feel free to shout it out since we're not in class. Um, if that is a right angle at F, then this is also a right angle. So both of these triangles on the left and the right have one 90 degree angle the same, but 32 and 58 aren't the same. I really do wonder though what this angle is up here. So why don't we figure it out? If this angle is 90, then that leaves 90 left for the other two. So 90 minus 32 is 58. So that's 58 degrees. So we have 58 and 58. So they are similar by angle angle. And let's write the similarity statement. I can write the first triangle any way I want, and I'm going to say C. F, D, and then for the other one I have to match it up. C is 32, so you have to decide in this F, D, E which one's 32, and be that one. 90 minus 58 is 32. So D, F is my right angle, it matches up with F, and D is 58, it matches with E, which is 58. Okay. Last but not least, we have, I think this was example three for us. We have a word problem. The flagpole cast a shadow that is 50 feet long. At the same time, a woman standing nearby who is 5 feet 4 inches tall casts a shadow that is 40 inches long. How tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot? Okay, that was a lot of information. Let's slow it down. Here's our picture. A flagpole casts a shadow that is 50 feet long. Well, where do you find shadows at? On the ground. Do you see it right here? There's the flagpole's shadow. And that is 50 feet. At the same time, there's a woman standing nearby who is five feet, four inches tall. So here she is, and she is five feet, four inches tall. And she casts a shadow that's 40 inches long. So do you see her shadow right here? 40 inches. That was 50 feet. How tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot? 
there we go. Now what is that distance there? Well, if I connect the top of the flagpole to the tip of the shadow and the top of the woman's head to the tip of her shadow, we've created right triangles. And it's under, it's uh, just always given that the flagpole will be perpendicular to the ground and the woman will be standing perpendicular to the ground. So if the sun is back here and it's shining on the woman and on the flagpole at the same time day, if they're both out there at the same time, the sun is shining right now on them both, then their shadows are proportional to each other. Let me just say that one more time. Any two objects that are out in the sun at the same time will cast shadows that are proportional to each other. So we have got proportional triangles here because, let's see, give me a second. So because the sun's rays are going to hit the flagpole, like imagine this being the sun's rays coming down and hitting the flagpole at the same angle that the sun's rays come down and hit the top of the woman's head. These angles are congruent. Can't see them very well. These angles are congruent to each other. So these two angles are similar by angle angle. Since they're similar, then I know the angles are equal and the sides are proportional. So I'm going to set up a proportion and it's going to be, I'm going to set it up as woman's height over flagpole height equals woman's shadow over flagpole shadow. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I don't think I have to change them all to feet. I'm going to keep the units here. But I am going to change 5 feet and 4 inches completely to inches. So we know there's 12 inches in a foot. So a 5 foot tall person is 60 inches. And she is 5 foot 4. So that's 64 inches. So I'm going to change this to 64. It's going to make my math a little bit easier. Okay, so when I cross multiply, 64 inches by 50 feet... 64 times 50. Let me just write that out so you can see something that happens. I'm going to totally erase that a little bit. That is equal to what I get when I multiply the other way, which is 40 inches times x. Do you notice that both sides have inches on both sides? The inches divide out and they're gone. So 64 times 50 is 3,200, I think. That's 3,200 feet equals 40x. Divide both sides by 40. Quickly divide by 10. And then 4 goes into 32 8 times, so it goes into 320 80 times. So x is 80. Could it be possible that the flagpole's shadow or height is more than its shadow? Yeah, it sure could. Especially when we back up and we look at the woman's height, which was 64, and her shadow, which is 40. Doesn't it make sense if the woman's height is more than her shadow, that the flagpole's height should be more than its shadow? Yeah. Okay. That wraps this up for today. Um, I hope this was a good lesson to do by video again. I feel like it was fairly nice because, um, because of how similar it was to our congruent things that we did in the past. Good luck. Enjoy your nice long weekend, and I'll see you Tuesday.